Today in the news, we have Elon Musk, Deus Ex. He changed his profile picture, but it's his tweets that have actually cost him billions and billions of dollars. Investors aren't happy and they're also confused and people are wondering what is going on. Has he turned full hippie? He's tweeted, I'm selling almost all physical possessions will own no house and that his girlfriend is mad at him so this is coming from a multi-billionaire a ceo of multiple companies let's discuss the news today let's roll the intro thank you for joining Okie dokie. So that was one of the more fun tweets. And uh, just one stipulation on sale. He actually does own Gene Wilder's old house. It cannot be torn down or lose any of its soul because he's an artist. And then he said, rage, rage against the dying light of consciousness. So he's getting poetic all there. And that's coming from Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. And you might be familiar with that due to Interstellar, or there was a book series that capitalized on this poem. I absolutely love this poem. And then he's getting all patriotic here. Over the land of the free and the home of the brave, oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. Now give people back their freedom. Free America now. So Elon Musk is a little upset because of the pandemic, and his factory is closed. So as a businessman, he's unhappy because his deadlines got pushed back. He's got a lot of cars to make. However, people are upset with him because of this tweet right here. Tesla stock price is too high in my opinion. So it's not a lot. It's a few characters and that cost him $14 billion, $3 billion personally in his own wealth. Now, most of his wealth, as most of these billionaires, uh, well, it's invested into their company. So they don't technically have it. They're the CEOs or they're a high executive of a company and they just hold a lot of stocks. So Tesla is public. His other company, SpaceX, is not public. He's also got the Boring Company and Neuralink. We're going to talk about SpaceX later. It's private. That's probably for the better because this is the issue with public companies. Whatever you say or do as the CEO, it's going to affect your companies and it's going to affect them big with shares falling. Now, in addition to these tweets, I don't think it was just that one tweet alone that took care of the $14 billion because we also have to look at the Dow Jones. It did go a little bit down. It's at 23,723. So it's two, 3% down over the past five days. I mean, it was at a peak of 24,730. So it's also going alongside the economy, but Tesla itself is currently at $701.32 and it dropped from 855.70 on the 30th, while the 1st of May here was at 755 and investors are unhappy that yes, it suffered a drop over here, but this could have turned around. It could have gone a different path because over the past month, it's been going up and up like crazy over the past six months. Well, it's been a little bit interesting. However, it was very close to a thousand. A lot of people bought it because they were excited because of the Q1 reports. So if you click on the link, uh, we see a tweet from Bitcoin. I absolutely love that. Bitcoin price is too low, in my opinion. And this guy, WTF Elon, you own the company, you can't say stuff like this. You just cost me thousands of dollars within seconds. I'm a Model 3 owner, long stock owner, and you do this, extremely disappointing. If you're a long time stock owner, stop being greedy. You're still in the green. Another one from Steven. What is wrong with you? This tweet alone just lost me over 300 pounds. I literally have half my savings in Tesla stocks, only four stocks, but that is going to be my funds when I go to university this year. Just because you don't care if you lose money, stop screwing over your shareholders. You only lost 300 pounds if you sold. Did you sell? If you didn't, it's only a UL, unrealized loss, and it could easily turn into a realized gain if you are patient. Be patient. Uh, some people are saying that options can expire, and the problem with options is people don't value time degradation cur correctly. Elvis says he lost $10,000 because of this tweet. WTF is wrong with you. You don't lose anything as long as you don't sell. Elon, I'm a Tesla supporter, owner, and investor. I bought into your earnings report and purchased a large number of shares at or near the peak price. Now I have lost almost $25,000 since then. Your thoughtless comment has materially impacted me. I trusted you with my retirement. And there's a problem with that, and Matthew addresses that here. There's literally no difference between this and a large gambling loss for addicts. You invested in something, stocks are basically like a poker hand. You put a lot of money on it, something went wrong, you lost, it's refined, fancy gambling. This guy says that might be true if this comment didn't come from the CEO. I was willing to take the risk based on external factors, but for the guy running the company to intentionally sabotage his stock price on a whim is not cool. It's really mean versus people that support him in Tesla. 
And Cam said, are you suggesting you weren't aware that the guy running the company was a bit of a loose cannon when you bought? Because that's some pretty bad due diligence if you didn't know. I know he's acted like an egotistical cartoon for the last five years and that his truck concept looks like a sci-fi Hot Wheel, but I didn't think leaving him my money was a risky move. And it is true, Elon has been in some hot water over the past few years. He's been in a few scandals here and there. And he also had another scandal involving Twitter and the SEC. So it's not like if you're investing into Tesla, if you did your research, it's not like you didn't know about this. Uh, so, you know, that's usually the case with crazy new companies. Uh, you got some interesting loose cannons here and there. WeWork was a great example of that. So unfortunately, that went down the drain. However, I think Elon Musk is going about it in a different way. These are just a few tweets. This is just his personal life. And I know that his personal life is mixed in with his work life. But usually a tweet or an action from him doesn't result in a long-term loss. For example, when he went on the Joe Rogan podcast and he engaged in smoking a substance on there. Yeah, the Tesla stock was affected by that, but then it recovered shortly after, and it was like, whatever. Elon Musk tweet wipes 14 billion off of Tesla's value, so it also knocked 3 billion off of his own stake, promptly bailing investors out of the company. In other tweets, he said his girlfriend was mad at him. In 2018, a tweet about Tesla's future on the New York stock market led to regularly just finding the company 20 million and Mr. Musk agreeing to have all further posts on the platform pre-screened by lawyers. Headache. On Friday, the Wall Street Journal reported it had asked the billionaire if he was joking about the share price tweet and whether it had been vetted, receiving the reply, no. Tesla's share price has surged this year, putting the electric car maker's value at close to 100 billion a mark that would trigger a bonus payment of hundreds of millions of dollars to the entrepreneur. We view these Musk comments as tongue-in-cheek, and it's Elon being Elon. It's certainly a headache for investors for him to venture into this area, as this tweeting remains a hot-button issue, and Wall Street clearly is frustrated. In 2018, Mr. Musk tweeted that he may have secured funding to possibly remove Tesla from the stock market and take it private, which again led to swings in the share price. The SEC judged it a market-moving comment, fined him, and forced Tesla to put in place in checks to ensure it did not happen again. But last month, the federal judge said Tesla and Musk must face a lawsuit by shareholders over the going private tweet including a claim that Mr. Musk intended to defraud them. Earlier this week, he tweeted to his 33.4 million followers some strong criticism of the U.S. stay-at-home restrictions because of the pandemic. Last year, he found himself in court after tweeting that a British diver uh, was a... Yeah, you guys can read that over there. So yeah, he's a bit of a troublemaker here and there, but he works hard and he's a billionaire. He's been doing all right with Tesla and SpaceX. Like our president, Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk just can't stop tweeting. Musk's latest comments delivered in a tweet storm Friday morning are still fixated on the country's shelter-in-place measures and how anti-America they are. It's a continuation of his in-real-life rant during Tesla's earnings call this week. Musk is known for his Twitter meltdowns, but since the outbreak, he's been on a months-long tear. His latest nonsense is directed to restrictions meant to curb the spread of the disease. This is mostly because his Tesla car factory in the San Fran Bay Area is not allowed to reopen until at least June. We get it. He's frustrated about what was supposed to be a banner year for Tesla with its ahead-of-schedule Model Y SUV starting to roll out, but that doesn't mean he can spread misinformation. Even his tweets about social distancing in America are inaccurate. States are imposing some restrictions, but you can still leave your house. His wildly off-base predictions are harmful and often based either on inconsistent data or from debunked studies and research. So on top of all that, he has a baby due Monday with the singer Grimes. So that's his girlfriend, goth girl. I like her music. So I think Tesla's going to recover. Tesla's going to be just fine. I'm excited about Neuralink because, hey, it might be the answer in the future to tinnitus. And, and by the way, if you have tinnitus like I do, check out tinnitustalk.com. I'm getting new and new comments about that on all my channels. Some people are getting it. Hey, you're losing your hearing. There is a forum with 31,000 members out there to help you. Whatever happens with Neuralink, hopefully Elon Musk fixes some uh, cognitive problems that are affecting millions of people, whatever it is, whether it affects tinnitus or not. It is a step in the right direction, and I hope all the best for it. But we're going to see those results in a few years. With SpaceX, we're going to see them a little bit quicker than that because pretty soon we're going to Mars. And by the way, I love his terraforming uh, profile picture over here. Not profile picture, but the banner. Uh, terraforming Mars over there. So last thing, why is SpaceX selling more than 1 million new shares? Elon Musk is a busy little space beaver, and this was written in March 2020. So in separate multi-billion dollar projects, the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla is aiming to build an entirely reusable set spaceship, send a crewed mission to Mars, and build a network of satellites to beam broadband satellite internet to every human on Earth. All this will require money, a lot of money. So why is Elon Musk raising so little of it? He's trying to get 250 million bucks. In contrast to the last time Musk raised $250 million, though, this time he's not taking out a loan. 
this time he's selling stock, a million shares of SpaceX stock. So if you do the math, that is priced at about 220 bucks a share with the closing date sometimes in the middle of March. To raise his target to 250 million, he'll have to sell about 1.1 million shares of SpaceX in total. So the total market capitalization will be around 36 billion. And if they would reach that, there would have to be 163.6 million shares outstanding after the issuance. But the logic behind all of this isn't raising $250 million. It's most likely to put that valuation out there because uh, SpaceX has previously advised that it expects to spend two to three billion to develop the Starship spacecraft, $10 billion or more to, uh, to build out a Starlink broadband internet satellite constellation, and at least $10 billion more to begin colonizing Mars. So that's a lot more than 250 million bucks. And the theory is SpaceX's new founding round is not actually about funding at all, but rather about determining the present value of SpaceX's stock. Why SpaceX needs this? Why is knowing this important to Elon Musk and to SpaceX, especially if SpaceX has no intention of cashing in? Perhaps it's simply a math problem. We know Elon Musk prefers funding SpaceX through debt offerings rather than share offerings, for example, so as to not dilute his ownership stake in the company. Or perhaps Musk is checking on the market value of SpaceX for a different reason. We know, for example, that SpaceX is planning to have an IPO of SpaceX subsidiary Starlink in the relatively near future. Both of these are just guesses, of course. The actual answer to the question probably lives only within the mind of Musk. And how did that turn? out here we got an update on it for 250 million dollars up to 500 million dollars was it affected by the pandemic on the positive side spacex's fundraising round for at least 250 million appears to continue to be open albeit there has not been any new filing so i guess that's still ongoing next we will be discussing bitcoin and cryptocurrency with the bitcoin having upcoming thank you guys so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it please leave a like comment subscribe and share we're currently at 8900 bucks with a market cap at 250 billion bucks i know this video wasn't about bitcoin but this was just crazy to see all on musk tweeting about that stuff what do you think is going through his head personally i'm a fan of him he's a bit wild like all tank entrepreneurs are yeah, if you're curious, actually, let me show you this. McLaren, Elon Musk, he actually had a crash. And this is young Elon Musk. So <laughs> this was a crazy McLaren F1, which is worth a lot of money right now. Even if it's crashed, because there was an actor who crashed, the guy behind Mr. Bean crashed his McLaren. It was still worth like $8 million bucks after $1 million restoration. So obviously, you know, $8 million or $10 million is nothing for a guy worth $25 billion. But this just goes to show that, hey, he's always been a bit of a wild card. My favorite part about that story, they still had to catch a ride to a business meeting because they crashed it along the way. So see you guys in the next video.